Um, and then I, I was asked to come out to MGM and um, they cast me in the first movie I did with Elvis Presley as his leading lady and it was called Girl Happy in 1964 and then we made... You were his leading lady yes. in Girl Happy? In Girl Happy, yes I was. Cynthia Fox. You don't remember all the names you play but some, and <laughs> some how, you and what, do. How, what was it like to work with Elvis Presley? It was... It was absolutely fabulous. It was an extraordinary experience. Um, I hadn't been I hadn't been a huge, gigantic, you know, screaming Elvis Presley fan. I liked him and I liked a lot of his records, but at that point in my life, who I was in love with was Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> you know, so I had sort of somewhat a different sensibility, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I was cast in this movie and I knew, and it was a, it was a sweet movie. It was a nice, um, it was an Elvis Presley movie, but it was one of his better ones, I have to say. It's the first day of shooting, I'm on the set, and best way I can describe it is you just, you just, something was happening and I didn't know what it was and everybody kind of stopped and I looked over and from that end of the sound stage it was Elvis and he was walking in, he wasn't doing anything, he was walking in and the presence that this man had, um, it just, you couldn't talk, you couldn't, nobody did anything, you just sort of stopped and watched him. And I remember thinking, oh my God, it's Elvis Presley. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to even open my mouth around him. I suddenly, all my years of, oh, Jimmy Stewart's for me. I, this man was just so, he was beautiful and, uh, but just a charisma that was just amazing. I'm happy to say, very happy to say, we became, you know how you meet certain people sometimes and you say hello and the other person says hello and you just, it's just a click. You feel like you've known each other forever. Yeah, it's always amazing and interesting when that happens. And that happened for Elvis and for me. We just, um, we just clicked. I ended up doing, uh, Mike announced yesterday that I was the only person who ever did three movies with him. So, I mean, that is true. And um, we just had a fabulous, fabulous time. There was People usually ask me, so was there a romance? Usually the first question I'm asked is, what was Elvis like? And then the second question is, what was it like to kiss Elvis? And then the third question is usually, okay, did you have a romance with him? Well, no, I didn't. I had actually just become married, um, not to Mike, to my first husband, about six days before we started the movie. So it, um, but what it was, I think, for Elvis, Elvis was that because every woman around him, I'm telling you, it was just like, just like radar, they would just go flying for him. And he got it that I, I really liked him at the beginning and we ended up truly loving each other, but there was no romantic involvement and I think he didn't have that almost at any time in his life and I think it was very uh, refreshing for him and I think allowed him to relax in a way that he probably wasn't able to when the flirtatious thing was going on. But I loved him, he was charming, I miss him to this day, always will miss him, and he was that southern gentleman that we all loved and thought of, and I just ache for what happened with him. It, uh, it should never have happened, and he Being was... Being another victim of show business, really. I yes, guess. yes, yeah. it, 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 he was. I mean, he made a lot of choices that were bad choices, but it came out of... Um, I always say he was a boy 19 years old from Tupelo, Mississippi and the second movie that I made with him we did in 1966 and we were shooting out at MGM and MGM, they've seen everybody, you know, they've seen Clark Gable, they've seen, it just meant, mentioned a star and they were always there. They don't care about anybody. They usually are just looking at their watch. When is it time to go home? Okay, so I'm at the commissary one day having lunch and my back is to the door. And this is at sort of the, the lowest point of Elvis's career because uh, the Beatles had arrived and the Beatles had swept everything. And, um, but we were still doing this movie. Anyway, the, the MGM commissary was a gigantic room and I was having lunch with somebody and I was facing her this way and the, the back, the door of the commissary was in back of me. And then all of a sudden, uh, it was that same, something was happening, you know, and I, I didn't know what it was. And then, I swear to you, nobody believes me, but this is the truth, this is what happened. Everybody in the commissary started to get up 
and they start and I thought what in the world and I and and they were just rushing and I turned around and you know how when you're trying to look through a glass door you're outside the sun is out and you have to do this to see in well it was Elvis and he was looking in and he was seeing in and all of the people at the MGM commissary sorry were running to the door to get to him and you saw him you know just see them and then he just disappeared so I've always thought here he was at the lowest point of his career he's um, he's been taken over by the Beatles etc cetera, etc cetera. and this commissary which had to have I don't know 700 people in it went racing after him what was it like to be a 19 year old boy from Tupelo Mississippi and have that happen only 10 times more a hundred times more he almost I hate to say it, but almost didn't stand a chance to survive that. It was such an, um, an unreal, out-of-world experience. And, and I don't think anybody can understand it unless it happens to them, you know. Uh, I mean, I saw it, but I, it's just hard to imagine. But I loved him, and I still love him, and I miss him every day. Elvis. Elvis. Everybody always asks about Elvis, <laughs> yes. He was um, a wonderful man. I, I truly loved him. We had a lovely relationship uh, because I did three movies with him. It spread out over a number of years. And you know how you meet some people, and right away when you meet them, you kind of go, hello, and you just, you just connect. You know, you don't know what it is, you just connect. And, and that happened for the two of us. It was, it was odd. Um, it, was not, it was not a romantic thing. I had, in fact, just gotten uh, married, my first marriage. Um, about 17 days before that. Oh wow! <laughs> and so, yeah. So I was, and I was clearly, I was a, you know, an exuberant bride. I was so, you know, I, I like kids used to do in school, Mrs. So and so and so. I was still in that phase, writing that all the time. Um, but he and I just sort of connected, and we we just, and it just grew from there. And he, um, he was just a very sweet. He was the good Southern boy, everything, you know, all of those um, Southern manners, yes ma'am, no sir, thank you ma'am, et cetera, all of those things were really um, so, such an integral part of him. You know, it, it, didn't, it didn't have any sense of, of somebody trying to do that or to remember to do that. It's just clearly part and parcel of who he was. And he had a darling sense of humor. Uh, he and, and his guys that were with him, they, they loved to play practical jokes on people. They had, <laughs> you know, like water balloons and stuff like that. They, that, that. they loved those kinds of things. And I have actually, the favorite picture I have of the two of us is one. It was taken at the end of, uh, it was the last, I guess the last scene in a movie called uh, Clambake, the last one we did together. And in this scene, um, Elvis... Well, as I've said a lot of times, the movies were always the same. You know, he was a race car driver or a ski instructor, and we were always in Florida. And it was, you know, <laughs> but this particular one, he was a race car driver, and um, and he coming down to Florida for the summer vacation, for spring vacation, uh, he's he was incredibly rich. I mean, just rich, 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 rich family money, and. Um, <laughs> On the way down to Florida, he stops in at this gas station, and I don't know if you remember uh, a lovely actor by the name of Will Hutchins. He played Sugarfoot on television many mm -hmm. years ago, and he was he worked as the the, the gas man there, and they decide to s switch places because Elvis has a job to be the ski instructor, or no, Will has the job to be the ski instructor. So they change places, and Will is of course delighted. He's driving a Maserati. He's doing this. He's doing that, and Elvis shows up just as as this guy who's going to give ski ski lessons. And, but the movie goes on, and in the very last scene, obviously, I've, I've fallen hard for him. I, and he said, no, really. He said, I'm, I'm, we switch places. I'm who, this. And, um, and she goes, no. And he finally pulls out his wallet, and I, he hands it to me, and I'm supposed to open it up and see his driver's license and all of that. Well, <clears throat> he and the boys had... Um, there was a picture that went around years ago of a really gnarled-faced old woman with no teeth and just <laughs> her face had sort of collapsed in on itself. Everybody, nobody ever knew whether it was an actual photograph or, or, or not. Right. But it was, uh, it was quite funny anyway. So we're doing this scene <laughs> and I open it up and this woman is looking back at me. And I, these, this is one of those things that is never as funny when you're retelling it. You know, but at the time you're doing it, it's hysterical. And I laugh so hard and 
he was laughing so hard, and the a set photographer was there, and he he caught the moment, and um, so you really see me laughing, and I'm j clearly hysterical. And they catch him; he's just kind of going to hit the steering wheel because he's laughing so hard. So he's almost a tiny bit out of focus, just a little bit, but he's laughing so hard. It's just a, clearly yeah. a really just a sweet moment, and it's yeah, it's one of my favorite pictures.